Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the NAISCC Race Car Graveyard Truck Series. It's season two finale time, and it's time to crown a brand new champion. Four drivers have made it to this point. Dave Cochran, John Forbes, Trenton Jump, and Ethan Smith. All four drivers with different storylines, drama mixed in between. Well, if you look at almost all the statistics, it states that our final four are the best at finishing the top 10, the top five, and almost winning every single race. As Danny Cochran gonna be up front leading the go, but he's gotta figure out, can he beat out John Forbes, Trent Jump, Ethan Smith, all you gotta do is be the first driver to finish of those four and you win the championship. But Green Flag is out for the freaky fast finale here at Homestead as they're roaring down in turn number one. They're already three wide back for fifth place. Ethan Smith wasted no time on the bottom three wide there in that double zero. Oh, 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 Crawling Rex into the wall and already out in the center. Big contact, John Forbes gonna be involved in this one. Already the big one strikes and Forbes' hopes for a championship could have been snuffed out in this one moment. Contact bump to the two and drops it down low. It is constant chaos and the championship drivers can't get away. He gets wrecked, spot is Danny Cochran, holds on and the wrecking goes on. Ethan Smith continues to go and oh no for the two. Tom Bourne in the outside wall, but where is Jump? He's trapped in that of 11th place. Here comes Danny Cochran to the inside, trying to make it any way possible to get by the double zero. The wrecking behind, Jump, Christopher Norris make contact. Norris gets spun around. This race isn't over just yet. We stay green, no yellow flies and it's gonna be Ethan Smith between himself and Danny Cochran is Cody Reed. And here comes the two, putting the bump, the pressure, the contact, get him out of the way. Danny Cochran wants a championship. I'd say, oh, these guys, anything can happen, man. I didn't go, I do not know what is gonna go down here. This race is getting crazy, boys. And Danny Cochran, like you said, he doesn't care. He's going through. It's gonna be a mono, a mono battle is here all going for glory as now jump goes to the inside of the double zero he is coming with fury and he is looking really fast right now he might be the one with the upper hand here six to go it's been history it's been demand it's been pressure it's squeezing up to the outside wall it's gonna be the two a little bit of contact let's go three wide five laps to go here at homestead for the championship and it's but at a turn number four for season two the rookie trend jump gets the championship All right, well, at that point in the season's finally here, huh? We have made it to championship week. Um, it's currently Sunday night at the time of me recording this. Done a lot of practice. Turned many a laps. And in less than 24 hours, we'll see if it was all worth it. 27 laps. I'm Cedric Hunter, driving the number 13 Ford F-150 for Snowy Desert Racing. I've been racing here for one season, so this is my rookie season. Hey, I'm Danny Cochran, driver of number 31 Logan's Lead Larry Arts Productions Chevrolet Silverado for Larson Line Racing. I have been racing in this league for three seasons now. My name is Mark Whitley, number 77, Driven Motorsports. Now, this is my second season in the truck series for ISRC. Hi, I'm Nick Crawford, driver of the number four. I drive for Snowy Desert Racing, and I've been racing with the ISRC for one season so far. Uh, well, I've been watching since season one. One of my teammates, Vincent Sora, which is the season one champion, racing here, and I uh, kind of, honestly, this league seemed like a crapshoot so um all the drama and everything going on and uh kind of seemed fun and something that I, I wanted to be a part of obviously racing here has kind of been so so some weeks you're just super frustrated because of the drama and all the the guys that just race out of their mind and don't have the talent to back it up and some races have been actually really good and really competitive and 
again, it, it's been very up and down, so my time, I guess, in this league have been decent. Uh, I'm not particularly fond of the trucks, just on our racing and how they drive. They don't fit my driving style whatsoever, and because of that, I guess I'm not a big fan of it. I've tried to make the adjustment and haven't found much success, so. Um, what got me into it, man, uh, raced with the guys that put this on for a while. We decided we want a better league, a better truck league than what we had before. And we decided what better way to to run in one than to make one ourselves. What got me interested into racing with the ISRC Truck Series? Well, I was uh, running the Cup Series that was affiliated with it on Saturdays. And I just, people were talking in the Discord about Truck Series on Monday and I was looking for a, at the time I was looking for a, a Monday league just to run. And I figured, you know, why not just run the Truck Series too? And, you know, it was, Few different people in them but you know, i had fun with the first season uh, me and Vinny had a pretty epic rivalry uh, going back and forth trading paint wrecking some race cars um a little bit easier to look back on it now than in the moment in the moment you know wasn't the greatest but you know added to the excitement so um season one was pretty interesting i uh, had to step away for season two for some other league commitments um back for season three hopefully here stick around for it for uh, season four five six however long this keeps going uh, Love being around here. Everybody, the league atmosphere is great. Um, couldn't ask for a better uh, league, honestly. What got me interested was that Freaky Fast Broadcasting was broadcasting this league in their last season. And I was going through their videos, looking at some of the races because I was on a lunch break. And then I saw the Homestead race. I believe it was the finale for one of the seasons. And it was just crazy. It was chaos, and, but it looked fun. So I'm all for the drama, and obviously. But <laughs> after seeing that, I had to join, and I was off on Mondays, so it just worked out really well. What got me into racing? Uh, pretty easy. Uh, from a very early age, my dad was racing ever since before I was born. I grew up around racing, pretty much, you know. I had Mark Martin blankets and covers in my crib. I didn't really have a choice, I guess. Um, grew up around it, you know, got the itch very early on. Uh, done a little racing in real life, off and on, a couple years, probably two or three years total. It's just something I've always enjoyed. It's uh, something about the uh, speed of it. It's something I've always, it's just fascinated me. I love doing everything I can as fast as I can. So it's almost like I'm racing myself in life. It's, uh, it's just in my blood. What originally got me into just racing in general was probably playing Need for Speed back when I was like a, you know, seven or eight years old. Other than that, I'm somewhat new to NASCAR. Well, I was pretty well born into it. Dad was always a racing fan. He was a big Earnhardt guy back in the day, and uh, he passed about, oh, roughly a year before I was born. So he was always a Harvick fan as I was growing up, and that kind of, you know, got passed on to me. So... Watching him when I was younger and stuff, that's really what got me into it and really what made me a race fan. Last few years, I've kind of gotten into the dirt stuff, you know, World of Outlaws, Lucas Oil, uh, Dirt Late Model Series. That's what I've been into heavy the last couple of years, but I still really enjoy the asphalt side of things as well. What got me into racing is way back in the day, I think. It had to be 2000, 2001, 2002, around that time. Uh, I just started watching racing with my dad and then I had, I was just watching it, just watching and then I was like, what's my favorite driver? At that time my favorite color was red and the guy who was winning the most at that time was Dale Jr. So that's how he became my favorite driver because he was driving a red car. Uh, what are my strengths and weaknesses heading into Phoenix? So I would say that my strength is obviously going to be the long run. Uh, I did a race here not too long ago in the cup cars and was leaps and bounds faster than everybody. And it was a championship race too, and I was leaps and bounds faster than everybody else uh, on the long run. And uh, I was kind of mediocre on the short run. I kind of expect that to be the same. I mean, it's it's been that way for the whole season. It's been that way for my whole iRacing pretty much quote-unquote career. So um, I'm going to start on the short run. Hopefully if I could just bring that bar up a little bit then I'll be uh, a little bit better so you know we'll, we'll see how it plays out obviously if, if it goes green and we have decent track position at the end of the race uh, I feel like I'm could be one of the favorites if I'm stuck in traffic and somebody like Mark just sets sail he's, he's gonna be hard to catch but we'll see how it plays out I mean it can play out a million different ways 
I think my strength heading in Phoenix has to be the amount of practice I put in. I know every bump, crack, crevice of that racetrack, and I really feel like we have the speed and the pace to pull it off. There's just so much that goes into it. I gotta also, my biggest strength, I have a great guy, group of guys around me practicing with me. Uh, me and Ollie practice a bunch together. Cody, Ethan, they're there as well. Uh, John Forbes. You know, we practice with these guys uh, oftentimes. And, you know, you see them up front every week. So we're racing with our competition. So we know what where the bar is going to be. And it helps me see what I need to do to push past that to be just a little bit faster. Um, so that's what I feel like my two biggest strengths are going into Phoenix because it's hard just to name one. But as for a weakness, I got to say the dirty air. I just struggle racing in dirty air with these trucks. We've seen it at Nashville Fairgrounds. We've seen it at Wilkesboro. We've seen it at Indy. You know, I, I feel really good in clean air. I feel really good on tracks where aero doesn't matter as much. You know, that's usually where we run the strongest, but somewhere like this, man, it's gonna be important trying to maintain the clean air in that track position. It's gonna be it's gonna be everything. You know, so I'm gonna fight a lot harder than I did last week to hang on to that top spot. And if you thought I fought hard last week, oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Definitely qualifying is my strengths. I think we have the best uh, average starting position on the grid right now. So I think, you know, as long as we can get a good qualifying run, I know last week, North Wilkesboro, we, I didn't get a great qualifying run, started fifth, although we were able to uh, rally and win the race. So that's always good. So really, I think uh, we're gonna have to start up front either on the pole or, you know, one of the first couple rows and lead the race. I feel like, you know, once, once I get out front, I'm pretty good front runner. I know some people that struggle with it. I, I seem to thrive in it, being out front and running out front by myself run my own line, you know, do whatever I want. Uh, weaknesses, probably, uh, usually whenever I'm running, you know, back farther in the pack, I have a tendency to be a little bit over aggressive. Uh, I want to get to the front a little bit too quick. Sometimes I burn the tires off. I put myself in bad position. So I think that's probably the biggest weakness is just sometimes I get a little bit antsy uh, trying to get back to the front and it causes, you know, me to have my own issues. Kind of what happened at Indy, you know, had a little miscue on pit road, started a little bit farther back, was pushing a little bit too hard and, you know, gotten tangled up with somebody else. So that's uh, something we're just going to have to watch out for and just try to run our own race and not uh, get too too overly uh, ambitious and too aggressive. Uh, just try to, you know, maintain and do as best we can to uh, minimize any uh, problems we have. We'll go ahead and start with my weaknesses first because that's all I'm about. Tire saving, consistency, being fast yeah I, I probably beat myself up a lot but I, I think i could be a little bit more consistent that would probably be the part i struggle with the most as for my strengths i i seem to get pretty lucky sometimes with strategy so that might be good whether it's a, a late race pit and everybody stays out because they think there's going to be another caution and i don't i pick at tires win the tire lottery that's happened before actually yeah, it's happened. So, probably being a little bit lucky. How am I feeling heading into the championship race? Well, I feel pretty confident. We've won the last, all three cutoff races so far. Um, technically, this is a cutoff race. It's the uh, one and only round. One and only race of this round. So, um, maybe we can go four for four. I mean, technically, you know, depending on how you want to look at it. But, uh... Good race track for us. All four guys there, you know, that are made the championship four, they de they they deserve to be here. You know, me, Cedric, Nick, Danny, we've all been running up front pretty much all year. I think it's just gonna be it's just gonna come down to who wants it more. Uh, plain and simple. Um, you're gonna have to go out there and earn it. You're gonna have to go out there and take it from them. It's gonna be wild. It's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be uh, a little crazy and probably stressful. I'm probably gonna have a little bit less hair after this race. Uh, I already have a problem with the receding hairline, so this is probably not gonna help. But you know, as long as we win the championship, it don't matter. You know, we're looking to go out there and uh, put on a show and uh, come away with a championship and uh, redeem ourselves from season one. And, you know, that's uh, what, we're all, what we're all here for. There's four guys out there going for it and only one of us can get it. So hopefully it'll be us and uh, we're going to go for it and hope for the best. I'm very heading into this race. I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, like I said, I, I know the other three are just going to be faster. Um, they do a lot of practice, they just have a lot more time, and, um, but anything can happen. Anything could happen. Indianapolis is one testament to that. Late race cautions, anything. Who knows? It's Phoenix, it's a flat track, it's kind of right in the middle of 
Martinsville and New Hampshire and Bristol and I don't know. I don't I have no idea. Phoenix is just its own track, I guess. But anything could happen. How am I feeling heading heading into this championship race? I feel probably actually I feel no nerves. I'm calm, cool, collected. I've, I've sometimes, depending on how big the stakes are, or how just nuts, for example, at a championship race three weeks ago in another league, and I felt really nervous going into that one, and um, knew the guys that I had to race with, and I, I really want to win, and we came up short, and I, that one sucked, and I felt really nervous, but for some reason, this one, I'm, I don't know, I think I'm okay with the outcome of whatever happens. I'm not that nervous, or... or I'm excited to, to get in the car and for the green flag to come out, but I'm not that nervous about actually racing for a championship. Uh, but, you know, hopefully we do, and hopefully we'll be this season's three? Three champion? Three. I think it is. I feel great. I feel confident. I think we can bring it home. We've got the speed and the pace to get it done. we got the group of guys around us that have been helping me all season long, you know. Like I mentioned before, Ollie, Ethan, Cody, John, all those guys. So we got what it takes. We just got to clinch the deal. Now, as far as who I think is going to take the championship, if I had to choose, or if I had to make a prediction, it would have to be either between Cedric or Mark. Uh, I say that because Mark has just been on fire lately. He's won, I think, three out of, of the playoff races. And Cedric, because he is always there at the end. He'll make a, he, if he makes a mistake during the race, he'll come back and he can win, just like he did at Indy. Uh, he spun off pit road and, and still closed out the win. And I've seen him win championships in, in, on the final race before in other leagues. Uh, he's just kind of the closer of the league, I think. So he's come in and, and really been strong. So I think it's going to be between one of those, those two guys. Cedric Hanna. I believe he, out of the whole team, you know, Nick Hoffman and Cedric Hanna, probably has the best chance. He's going to be fighting with Mark and Danny, of course, and then Dan, I mean, I feel like Nick, he will probably be up there in the long run. I know, uh, that's, honestly, I feel like that's kind of his thing. Kind of like with Cedric, he, he starts on the short run. But, I know I feel like Danny will probably fall off quickly, but we will have, uh, Cedric, Nick, Mark just fighting up front and hopefully they can get past Mark and just go take the champ. Going to Phoenix, obviously, the, we, since we won Indy, I was kind of locked in. I had an extra week uh, to practice, go heading into North Wilkesboro, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I can honestly say that I didn't practice at all, so I kind of didn't abuse the advantage that I had. And then we did practice the week of Nick and I, and honestly, practice didn't go well for me. I couldn't figure out the speed. I was pretty far off, but it seemed like dirty air really like mattered. So if I did a run in front of Nick, he would just hound me for 20 laps, and it would be right up on my bumper, and wouldn't be able to complete the pass. And if he, or if it was rolls reverse where I was behind him and he was in front, he would just kind of check out like two second lead, and then just start walking away. So um, the speed wasn't there. But we did practice. Uh, I think I practiced for two hours this week, which is about. Just about two hours more than I normally do, so we put in some work. Probably not as much work as my fellow competitors, but, you know, we put in something, which I guess is better than nothing. Going into Phoenix, I felt pretty good. We really thrived on the flatter tracks. Uh, the medium-range flatter track has kind of been our wheelhouse, I guess you could say. Kind of take Milwaukee or Gateway, especially tracks where you have asymmetrical corners. It feels a lot less like your standard oval than other tracks, and I don't know. It's just something I enjoy racing on. It's some, you know, that's the type of track I've always felt really confident on since day one. Our season one result didn't show it as much because we really struggled in that race. But overall, I really enjoy the uh, the flatter style tracks. Practiced with Ollie a bunch earlier in the week, and we, me and him figured out pretty early that you could shift. So we worked on that, kind of tried to nail our entries into one and three. So we got that nailed down, and then by the end of the week, we were pretty confident in our shifting. 
It is set, it is ready, it is the ISRC Race Car Graveyard Truck Series Season 3 Finale Race here tonight. As Season 3 certainly had its highs, its lows, the great rivalries, the drama, but it's time for us to see how the drivers are going to be set as we are done with qualifying. The drivers are gritting up and it's time for us to call a championship race. We're excited to give you the coverage here on Freaky Fast Broadcasting. My name is Sam Dyer. With me is Zach Hall. And Zach, what a season. It is coming to a conclusion now. That it has been, man. It's been an amazing season all the way up to this point. And this is where it all concludes here at the Phoenix Raceway. And this track is notorious for some great races. So we'll get to see who our true champion is here tonight. We got into qualifying. And as everybody's seen, we got there, I spun it. This is where the drivers will start here tonight. One of our championship four drivers getting the pole award. It's Mark Whitley in the 77. That will be his 10th career pole, extending his pole length that he's had for this career in the ISRC Truck Series. Second place is going to be GT Irizarry. Second of our championship four drivers is going to be Nick Crawford in third. Third of our championship driver is going to be that of Cedric Hunter in fourth. Cody Reed is going to be in fifth. That of Anthony Gaudio, six, seven is going to be Logan Brakey. John Forbes in eighth, ninth is Martin Morales. And Christopher Norris finishing out our top ten. In the eleventh position, it's going to be the eight of Noah Steele. Twelfth is going to go to Tyler Dingler. Thirteenth is going to be our final of our final four contenders. That's Danny Cochran with a tough qualifying there. And back in thirteenth, Danny Cochran's been feeling confident all week long. A poor qualifying run sets him only back in thirteenth. Up front, watch out! It's time to get rolling as it is time for the freaky fast finale of the ISRC Race Car Graveyard Truck Series. We're green for the championship race. Just like that, they start already all going down. They're going to get GT already down the track. And luckily, it looks like nobody gets hit by that. Maybe Tyler Dangler is going to be involved. In the back half, that's going to bring out the yellow. Nolan Hicks as well. And what a spectacular way to start out the championship race. GT goes flipping and spinning to bring out this yellow. I'm so sorry, Tyler. I'm so sorry, GT. I don't even know what the happened. Yeah, I don't know. I, if I turned you, which I think I did, I, I'm so sorry, man. Did Cedric get a piece of that then? Hey, to be fair, we didn't say anything about watching out for the non-playoff guys. No, I even blipped the throttle. I don't know what happened. If you miss a shift or whatever, I just, I, I don't know. But, I mean, that was on me. Also, no one you're all good. Don't worry about it. I was being a little too cautious on that first lap. Way too cautious. And as a yellow flag comes out, it's going to be contact between Christopher Norris and a few other drivers bringing out our second caution of the day. You really are a college pack off to you. Dude, I don't know if that was net code or what, but I was not trying to touch you there, and I don't think I did. You know, I was watching my meal the whole time, and you were right there. I know, I was faster. I was not trying to touch you. You look at my steering wheel, I'm turning left. I apologize, did you get out of it all right? Yeah, it's fine, but Moxon, I'm not supposed to hit me, so I'm sorry. Yeah, I was unfortunately looking out my right side when you got spun, so by that time I looked back, he, uh, I had nowhere to go. I'm sorry, Martin. I genuinely did not mean to touch him. I had a run coming out of the corner, and I was inside. I don't know if he was turning down harder than I was going down or what, but I didn't think I was going to touch him at all, so I apologize. Yeah, Norris, I was told there may have been uh, contact, but the way you spun around looked like netcode threw you because I wasn't trying to do that at all so that's on me so I apologize. So we started 13th out of a 17 car field and we had to get moving. We had to fight for every position we could coming up through the field like we were the uh, third monkey on the ramp to Noah's Ark and brother it was starting to rain okay so we really had to fight and claw through the field you know, thankfully there were a bunch of guys that I consider to be pretty good friends of mine. They cut me some slack, like uh, Ethan and John. They both cut me some slack when I was trying to get around them.
So start of fourth, uh, took off. Obviously, as to be expected, Mark just sailed away early on. We kind of settled into a position where we were, I was trying to save tires and see if it was going to work out, and everybody either caught up or kept walking away, and I didn't have speed. It seemed like the, the speed that I took off the run with just kind of stayed there, and I was hoping that, like most other races, that we were going to be able to learn and adapt throughout the race, and uh, I can honestly say that uh, Phoenix isn't necessarily one of my best tracks, but I feel like in a cup car usually there, I'm, I'm very quick to learn and adapt, so uh, I guess that was my expectations going in, was that we were going to kind of see what everyone else was doing and be able to mirror it. Well, I guess that wasn't the case after the first run. I know Danny qualified in the, the back. Um, he says that it was intentional. We'll say sure, I guess, because I mean, it worked out for him for reasons that I'll explain here in a bit. So uh, he qualified in the back, marched his way through the field. Uh, obviously, I could tell that for him, passing was really easy. Uh, it wasn't the case for me, so I knew I was kind of in danger early. To win this championship, I don't know what it would mean. I haven't gotten there yet. And uh, I'm a kind of person that doesn't like to assume too many things, including things about myself. Um, I know from what I can assume that it would be pretty exciting. I haven't won a championship before, so yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Yes, does. Those up front ahead of this double zero starting to battle with one another. That John Forbes, Cedric Hunter Ooh. battling for fifth place. What are you seeing, Zach? The Ford just got put into the wall. That was contact between him and Cochran. So Cochran just drove his way up into position. He just caught the left rear of the Ford machine, put him right up into the wall. And I think it was just really two drivers going for the same space. The 31 was almost to the quarter panel and the Ford just looked like he wanted to keep coming down the racetrack. So maybe it was somewhat of a racing incident, but that is major damage damage on the four and i think that is gonna possibly even ruin his night we got behind cody and nick they were battling for the second spot caught him really fast then i was, was kind of following him for a few laps as i was catching up to him seeing what lines they were running they were both entering high into three so i get there and it's a championship race i can't afford to rate i can't afford to waste time so i dive it down to the bottom and going into one lo and behold the time i do that nick kind of cuts down I didn't expect him to cut down. I wasn't anticipating it. I held my line. I felt like he came down on me. And Nick, I didn't. I didn't expect you to come down, Nick. I'm so sorry. Oh God, what have I done? Make it two seasons in a row. Nick, I need. I need you to understand. I didn't think you were going to cut down right there. Honest to God. I am so sorry, Nick. I am so sorry. Nick, I just want to re reiterate, I honest to God, I understand you're mad at me. You have every right to be. But I honest to God wasn't trying to do that. I didn't expect you to cut down there. PM me after the race, dude. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something. My recap for Phoenix is a short one, fortunately, for most people. But, uh... Yeah, it was about 27 laps, I think, I think, and then I got wrecked, but we had speed. I was doing pretty good. I was surprised. I, we did some practice and found some speed and was really looking forward to that night and then uh, ended prematurely. Clipped my nose and then he went up into the wall. I really hate that it happened that way. Nick is one of the cleanest racing guys in this league. He's one of the best people I know, and I'm not just exaggerating in that. He is genuinely such a nice person that I hated that it happened to him. If it has to happen, I didn't want it to happen to him, man. And what sucks about that is I feel like I really hurt his feelings on that, and I, I really regret it that we made contact. Again, I don't feel like I came up on him, and I tried to be really predictable with my move, you know, going through the dog leg into one, I stayed low on the entire part of that straightaway. I tried to be as clear about it as I could that I was going to the bottom in turn one. I mean, I hate that it happened, but racing deals, man, they happen sometimes. The 31 has had this reputation of having drivers uh, that he's bumped out of the way on accident or intentionally. But now it's time to see what will the Ford do? Will he get out of the way? And he does. Rides high, lets Danny go. The respectful play, even though his race is done. Just want to point out, whatever happens here, I fully deserve. Like, real talk, Nick, I wouldn't even blame you, honest to God. Man, now I just feel worse. Honest to goodness, from the bottom of my heart, I can't say it enough, Nick. I am truly sorry.
Danny, he's not talking in the uh, voice chat, so I just leave it for now. And Nick is not that type of guy, he would not like you. No matter what you did to him. Somebody shit, I ran over him for no reason. I'm an empath, and I'm sensing that Danny feels sorry. Danny, on the scale of 1 to 10, how much did you piss yourself when you, when you were passing him? Um, ah. Uh, I, I would have deserved it, honestly, so, you know. But I, I'm just gonna, like Norris say, I should probably leave it alone. I guess there's an incident around like lap 30-ish with or with Nick and Danny, and they got collected in a wreck. Got put into, or got I should say collected in a wreck. There was I guess some connection problems. That I'm gonna say netco just for the simple fact, you know, why not? So screw this whole magical thing that everyone keeps talking about. It was netcode. There's netcode uh, between them, those two, and Nick unfortunately got you know put into the wall by netcode and gave him a, a decent amount of damage that pretty much ended his race. He was off pace, and unfortunately, you know, Nick being our teammate, and I felt like he was faster than me. Uh, I don't know if he was faster than the other two guys, but he had a lot of pace, and after that, I guess after lap 30, so pretty early on the race, I knew that I was just more or less locked into the top three, no matter what happened. A little bit, but that 31, man, he has been flying, and he had to fly up through the pack. So when he starts on the back bumper, he's going to have a much better shot at this once we get it all back going. This is going to be fun to watch. Last lap of the stage, Mark Whitley leading the way for the 77, and he is looking good, but at the same time, hoping not to see some deja vu of Indianapolis that of two weeks ago. The 77 at turn number four, going to find himself winning the Larry R. Production stage break here tonight at Phoenix. Yeah, great stage. I mean, that was a perfect 65 laps from the 77 machine. I mean, just what we've seen through it with him throughout the whole entire season as we wait for that caution to be thrown. I think uh, our admins might be a little late on that trigger pull as I think they're waiting actually for 10th to come across the board. But there it finally comes out. And man, what a wild, wild here start to this race with some incidents. But now we all get to be racking back up. Get stacking back up, and for us, we're going to step aside. When we come back, we're going to have more championship racing here for the Season 3 finale of the Freaky Fast Finale of the ISRC Truck Series. And then we started to close on Mark, which he had already checked out. You know, by the time I climbed up through the field, he was able to gap the rest of the field. We get to the stage, we come in behind Mark in the pits. We both have pretty solid stops. I come out right behind him. I might have been side by side with him when we crossed the line, but I think I was a little bit behind him. Go into the second stage, or, you know, the rest of the race, whatever you want to call it, and it's just a game of cat and mouse, you know. He's the mouse trying to run away, I'm the cat trying to chase him down. Unfortunately, in dirty air, you can't really do that. So he was able to just kind of scoot away. This is why we have side-by-side -side action. You didn't miss a thing. Yellow flag is out. Ethan Smith, John Forbes. Incident between the teammates. After, I think, the stage, if I'm not mistaken, I finished, like, sixth in the stage. And I just fell back, man. The pace wasn't there. I was never, never able to adapt. It became a mark and... Danny show where they were 1-2 for the rest of the race and I was kind of struggling through the midfield and I wasn't able to do anything. If I had clean air then I had okay pace and if I had dirty air I was just bad. Early on in the race I was running the bottom line and it didn't really seem to be working too much so I moved up and uh, especially in 1-2 and, and it helped I guess but it wasn't as good as I was hoping it, it to be. We just didn't have the pace so it is what it is. So he has no worries about any type of pit stops. This is now going to be a mono bottle. The caution's out. And more contact, you saw on screen there late between that of the 26 and Oli Fonseca. I mean the 29, excuse me. Contact all around as they were entering turn three and then the exit, there was some madness. Car outside, or truck outside. We got to check up here, boys. I mean, I know I came up a little bit, but I thought I left the room. You know, knock on wood. You know, after I say this, I'm probably going to spin out and probably caution myself, but let's just have a, a, let's try to have a cleaner race. It's not cleaner race, clean race to the end. There's only like 12 of us or 15 of us out here. Uh, but you know, we can't, we can't help see the press spins, but I want to let you guys know that. One, the outer group has been the preferred way to make the passes happen, so I think the 77 is going to be clear, but the 31, giving them everything to think about there on that great restart. Really timed that one well there to stay close enough to even get to that corner. 
Right, that bumper does not get to the quarter panel. He'll stay in sight. He's the 31 and 77. And because of a great launch out of turn four into the dog lake, diving it down low, he's going to settle in behind. Is Danny Cochran to Mark Whitley? Mark dominated. He never had this fight in the first half of this race. And now he's got his first contender on that back bumper and is a championship driver. He needs to hold on. And here comes Danny recognizing he needs to make this pass very quickly. Yeah, I think that's going to be kind of in the agenda for the 31. He knows that it evens out. I'm sure with all the testing he has done this week, he's seen how fast the times can really even out. How much would winning the championship mean to me? Uh, it would mean the world. Felt like we kind of let one slip away with some uh, pit strategy season one. I knew it was going to be pretty much between me and Vinny, and we were racing hard for the first half of the race, and I tried something different on strategy, trying to uh, get a little bit of advantage, and I overdid it a little bit, and it wound up costing us, and we... Uh, just wind up finishing third in the championship just you know bad bad strategy call um we had he was probably a little bit faster speed wise but we had enough speed i think to keep up with him but when like i said we just tried something different it didn't work um this time around i feel very confident um i finally got the hang of this new uh phoenix ever since they redone it uh swip the uh, swap the uh ends of the racetrack you know turn one and two is used to be three and four and vice versa i feel confident it's a good track and good car for us we just gotta go out there and execute plain and simple kind of heading into the second half of the race i know my teammate nick parked it because again his race was done he was last place he's going multiple laps down it's really unfortunate for him i guess like i said he had better pace than i did and i was hoping that he was gonna be able to capitalize on that and hopefully be able to race for a championship so honestly when he held up for it i was so frustrated on myself just for not being able to, I guess, adapt and get better. Like, I mean, you, you I can literally see the championship just driving away. I'm not gonna lie, it, it I, I got annoyed and I, I wanted to quit. I just wanted to park it. Like, Nick was out of the race. He left because he knew he didn't have a shot. At that point, I was so frustrated. I just kind of want to follow him and just get be done with the race. Like, there was probably still 80, 90 laps to go at that point, and I just wasn't interested at all to finish that. So, like, from that point on, I think I was just running laps, and I'm not gonna lie, I was complaining just about every lap. It, just, it wasn't fun. I didn't struggle, man. We sucked. It was the one race of the season that I just, the page just wasn't there. Unfortunately, it was the, the most important race, and it was the race where the speed should have been there, and it, it wasn't, it didn't click, so it is what it is. Next time, don't love, just blow my engine, please. Yeah, I should have drove into your door there. I, God, I hate how nice I am. No, oh, I didn't mean it like that. I just meant my f suffering. I meant it like that. That's fine. If I get a caution, maybe you'll, you'll have a second opportunity. Well, beginning of the race went perfect. Got the pole, led the first 120 something laps of the race, completely had control over it. Every restart was great. I was able to pull away from the whole field. Uh, felt good, then into the race, I think about 25 laps to go, a couple people racing for 12, 13 for no reason, decided they wanted to race hard and wreck and cause a caution. Finish, they want that final stat, and still, Mark Morales Jr. fighting right on back with a three. Yeah, what a crawl there earlier for the 91 machine. He used that top side to his advantage. And I think that's the one thing that's caught me off guard the most tonight from the booth. And there it is, the contact, the 91 goes around, and that is the caution. Wow, Sam, you called that. If we were going to see it, it was right there. We saw the aggressive driving from the three that a 20 laps ago. Well, he gets overzealous there with the 91, the 91 fighting and clawing for everything. And the late caution, as we're now going to be with the 20 lap to go marker when we go green again. Zach, this could be the money stop. You've got to hit your mark coming into pit road now. Uh, precedent was set last week at Wilkesboro with me and Mark, you know. Um, I raced him clean, and he raced me clean for the most part, but that last time, you know, he uh, got in my door a little bit going into the corner, and then he kind of cleared himself up across my left front fender. So a precedent has been set on how me and him are going to race for this championship. But then, then it got exciting, right? Then it got to the show, got to my favorite part of the race. Yeah, I think this is, you know, 
where the demons start to come in, as they would say, as a driver. You know how detrimental pit road can be. You know where mistakes can happen. This could be what it's all about. Mark Whitley, Danny Cochran, you have to be completely clean here when you get to pit road. You got to make sure you get to your box. Don't slide through it, and you got to have a good pit stop at that. And that is where it gets out of your hands, and it's all up to your pit crew. This one, like you said, could be that money stop. We'll see who comes off pit road first because track position is everything here at Phoenix. Cedric Hunter, the, he has to take two. This is the only way he's gonna have a chance for a championship. He has to take two tires. The question is, what will Mark Whitley and that Danny Cochran go with? Danny into his pit box. He's got the earliest one of them all. He will take four tires and fuel for the 31 machine as he's gonna be good. Mark Whitley sees the right sides go up, but will Hunter only take his right sides or will he take all four? A big question and it looks like from what I'm seeing he's taking four tires didn't will look to will risk it but I think Danny Cochran won the race on pit road he did he had over that of a half a second faster than Mark Whitley and he'll have the lead here on the restart this opens up the door for everything I mean I tell you what and Whitley spun the tires a lot luckily for him I think he holds on this second just because of his last pit stall but man oh man Danny Cochran right here might have been gift wrapped a present. This is his chance to shine, folks, and we'll see. The money stop. Unfortunately for Mark, we've seen him struggle a lot in the pits this season, you know, especially when it really counts at the end of these races. We take our pit entries and pit exit approach very differently when it comes to getting in a box. And I think it kind of proved that we had the advantages there because I didn't spin my tires at all. I had a really good entry. Gaudio was to my outside whenever we came out of the pit box, so I was kind of able to stay lower longer without risking a penalty. And that really played to my advantage. Through a weird cycle of events, somehow getting beat off pit road, even having the first pit stall and having the perfect pit stop, just restarting on the outside sucked. Arrow on the truck sucked in traffic. Mark, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I don't even know if he slides through a box or just because he has one of the first pit stop or pit stalls, and Danny had, I guess, one of the the ones in the back, I guess, in the corner at Phoenix you're able to kind of like cut through the corner and basically shortcut so i mean it's an advantage and he got by danny and again whoever is clean air is just gonna reign supreme i mean passing was really really difficult here we go it is going to be a 20 lap shootout will we get another caution let's find out we're green for the freaky fast finale here at phoenix danny cochran a spectacular finish cody reed side by side for second as they head down into turn number one what a start for the 31 and the 25 now trying to slide up in front of that 77. I think he's going to have the preferred group up top, so he might be able to get this pass done. But this gives the breathing room that the 31 wanted. Oh, and GG now sends it's around. Shot. Yellow flag comes out, and Mark Willie holds for second as the 14 snowballed incidents carry on. Oh, man, this right here just makes it even more nerve-wracking. If you're Whitley, you're saying this is taking away laps that I need to set him up because I'm going to tell you all right now, pass here at Phoenix is going to be very tough. How much would winning this championship mean to you? Kind of going to have a mixed vibe about this. Obviously, I mean, winning the championship is the end goal for the season. It's kind of what everyone's racing for. So I would I would like to win the championship. I, it, I would be lying if I said that I wouldn't. But truthfully, even if I didn't win it, I'd probably be upset for maybe an hour and then move on. Um, I've won championships in other leagues that were or in other series that I felt like have meant more to me. Um, than this one, but I mean, I'm still going to try and go out here and win and do whatever I can too, so. You saw there were plenty of different scenarios on how this championship could finish. I don't think we could have settled for this or had any idea it was going to be like this, but we're back to Great Flag Racing. 16 laps to go. Danny gets a great launch, but Mark, a much better, cleaner run. Cody's nowhere close to be found. It's between the two up front. And here we go, dive down to the inside from the 77, but I think he's not gonna have the drive he needs as the 31 up top holds that upper groove. The 77 almost still to the quarter panel here as they race down to three and four. Now that's a Mark Whitley's gonna try to get the quarter panel, but a dive bomb move by the 31, holding off for the lead, recognizing he needs to get rolling. Once these tires are heated up, that lead position, the fresh air, it's just too strong. Mark Whitley has not been in this position all night long, 15 to go. Who's getting the championship? Mark's gonna dive it into the corner, almost drifts that rear end. Again, he has not been in this scenario yet, Zach, but Mark knows he needs to make this pass quick. It's just been aggressive and being in vain. The 77 finally goes down, but it's too late. The gap is already filled, and the dive ball move, Mark just sends it into turn one. Yeah, just not close enough for that. I don't understand that move there. That was 
you know, it, it somewhat worked decently because it didn't allow the 31 to cut down the racetrack like that line opportunity-wise does. But you got to be a little bit closer, wait for that move. And now the 31 knows that that could be coming, and he can look to defend that possibly here. But uh, In, like, 7th or something, 6th or 7th at that point, uh, heading down to the final laps. Mark, obviously, maybe striking distance or, or not, uh, tries to go for a lunge into turn 1 on the apron. And... Eventually, after a few restarts, I think the last one was about 10 to go, something like that, 10, 15 laps to go, uh, we were able to pull out in front of him, and then he does this, it was really interesting to me, because I would have never thought to try it myself, he does this Hail Mary move down all the way to the pit wall and turns one and two. It's like nothing I'd ever really seen before, honestly. One lap, get the white flag, and you don't have to worry about a caution. Then you just got to worry about making it around the corners. He has been battling for all this time on his 53rd start. That of Denny Cochran just needs one more time around this lap, and he will be a champion. Winning the championship would mean a lot to me. Um, I know everybody wants to win, obviously, but, you know, I think it would mean more to me than it would to most, honestly. I've raced here longer than most people. Uh, there's a few that have been here as long as me, but nobody here longer. I got the first win, the first ever win in this series. One more swing for the back bumper, coming out of four. Cochran going to look for his first career win here. Danny Cochran, he might be holding on, but there are going to be three wide coming to the trial and it's going to be the two by a nose here at Daytona. Danny Cochran winning. What a job by Danny Cocker here to get the first win of this series. Congrats to him. I know he's worked super hard to build this series with the rest of the team there in the admin group here. Uh, I've been trying to win the championship for three seasons. Came pretty close last time, but no cigar. We keep showing up, and we keep coming up just a little bit short. It would just be fantastic to be able to close it, to clinch this deal one time. And I feel like we got a really good shot at it here. We're good at Phoenix, and I think we got what it takes to pull it off. I know a few of the other championship guys, they've been practicing, you know, they've been putting in work as well. But I really feel like we've got it nailed, man. I think we've got the line down, and we just got to catch some clean air. That is going to be Sam, and it looks like here, he's going to get the look up to the flag stand and get that white flag. This is it, the freaky fast final flag for these drivers. It's your ride rad white flag for these drivers for the freaky fast finale. It has been incredible to watch all the drama, all the spills, all the thrills. And Mark Whitley does one more dive bomb. It wasn't enough. Danny hits the back stretch. He'd been fighting, he'd been going for it. And now he can say for season three for the 31, the Larry Art Productions 31 machine is a champion of the ISRC race car graveyard truck series. What a job by Danny. Good win, Danny. Congrats. Good win, Danny. Thanks, uh, Cedric. I appreciate that, man, for real. Thank you. Mark, hell, oh, oh, we're running, we're spinning, we're spinning, we're spinning, we're not spinning. Hell, heck of a run there, Mark. You got great too, man. Oh, I guess he's upset. Uh, that is what it is. Good job. Good job, Danny. It's time for us to talk to the driver that worked his way to not have the qualifying run that he wanted, but after tonight's stats, a total of 20 starts, Three wins at that of Las Vegas, Road America, tonight at Phoenix, seven top fives, 13 top tens, and now you can say a first time champion of the ISRC Race Car Graveyard Truck Series for season three. It's the 31 of Danny Cochran. Danny, you're a champion. How are you feeling? Bacon, man. Oh my gosh. Wanted it for three seasons, came up short in the first two. It, you know, it is awesome that we were able to pull it off after uh, you know everything that happened last season a whole lot of drama nonsense all that stuff we were on the rebound this season had a pretty shaky start a uh, bunch of dns bunch of wrecked race cars uh man it is so awesome and so cool that we were able to kick things up in the playoffs and kind of be able to contend with mark at these uh the end of these races and you know every, all the other guys everybody's been really fast all season it's been so competitive man but you know just being able to keep up with these guys and uh being able to strike when the moment presents itself, it's just, it's really sweet, man. It's, it's great. But you are the champion. I know you got some people you want to thank, so the floor is now yours. 
or anybody you got to thank for yourself? Uh, well, first and foremost, um, my sponsors, Logan's Lead and uh, Larry with Larry Arts Productions. He was on the truck tonight. Um, it was really cool being able to get it done with him on the hood. And we had an agreement. It started at Road America. I hadn't really said anything about it to anybody. But he sent me a picture during qualifying. He was eating a steak, and he was like, maybe it's good luck. Well, Road America, unfortunately, once again, it's Nick Crawford. He disconnects. I take the lead, and we're able to hold on to it till the end of the race. He does it again at uh, Nashville Fairgrounds. I don't win, but I finish second. So, you know, that's still, that's still pretty good. Can't complain with that. No stake for Indy. No stake for... Uh, Wilkesboro, but I, I'm telling you, I'm not a superstitious guy, but me and him, we both had steak for dinner today, and we won the championship. I'm not saying that's the reason why, but I mean, you know, I'm just saying these things. Shout out to my teammates at Larson Line. Those guys, uh, especially Ollie, he's joining us next season. Been practicing with him, Cody, Ethan, um, John sometimes. We've all been practicing a bunch these last few weeks, and I feel like it's really made me faster and really put me in contention to win so I want to thank those guys as well the admins for making this possible the, those guys they do a ton of ton of hard work I know it can't be easy and lastly you guys for putting on an awesome show week in and week out and I promise I'm finished well my teammate Ollie he was able to get second so that was pretty sweet the old Larson line one two really happy he was able to pull that off you know so it was really really fun experience for me I'm thankful to everybody for that you know um, good lord above friends and family for watching all my races, putting up with the nonsense over the last three seasons that I've had to offer. Uh, you guys for broadcasting the admins, uh, my teammates who aren't in, this, aren't, aren't in the truck series over at Junkyard Sim Sports, those guys are really cool. Um, yeah, the, these are all guys that, I, these are all folks that I didn't get shout out in the interviews after the race, so I wanted to get that in there real quick. When I finished second at the championship, I don't really feel like I uh, deserved it. I certainly felt like I should have finished last out of the four. Now my best run is definitely my worst of the season, so finishing second, I guess, in the championship's cool. I mean, it's not the championship, so it kind of sucks, but I didn't feel like we deserved it at all, so. Oh, well. Uh, congrats to Danny for winning. Uh, congrats, I guess, to Mark at the pace, unfortunately. I mean, it, it backfired. The, the pit stalls and sh stuff like that just backfired, so, you know, it, it sucks for him. And, uh, well, for Nick, too, uh, he had, a, again, a lot of good pace. Unfortunately, I caught up with Netcode, so I guess we lucked out. We lucked out on the second place finish because it, it could have so... If the race would have went a little bit differently, we would have finished fourth. So we walked away, I guess, with something. Um, I know there's a price for second. I don't remember it off exactly off the top of my head. I think it's like 40 bucks and I want to say a plaque of some sort. So that's pretty cool, considering uh, third on back, I think they don't get anything, if I'm not mistaken, so... We at least walked away with something, it didn't, you know, the season, I guess, wasn't necessarily a waste. Um, so yeah, Phoenix didn't go great, but, you know, second's better than last, so. I mean, drove <laughs> off doing everything I knew what to do, fit and, <laughs> and lost the championship on just a fun little stupid event that, you know, running for 12th in the last race for nothing decided to affect the championship, so, yay. With that last race at Phoenix, I, I wish we could just redo it, but, you know, that's looking into the past, that's looking at what could have been and not what is, and I've been trying to look more at what is instead of what it could have been. So, um, as they say, it is what it is, but I wish it could have gone a different way. Uh, how am I feeling with the result? I uh, honestly... Um, this is a week later, and I know for the first, that night, I was probably never been more pissed off in my iRacing career. I, I'm still pissed off about it. I feel like we had the best truck throughout the whole playoffs. We won almost half the playoff races, controlled that race for the first 120-something laps, and not to take anything away for Danny, but... You know, we got lucky on the pit road, got out in front of us, and then the arrows on the truck, the uh, dirty air, I couldn't do anything. So, I mean, uh, whatever pit road gods he's prayed to worked, and uh, we just got the short end of the deal. I feel obviously terrible because the pace was just not there. But, I mean, the fact that I guess I finished second, even with how bad I was, I, I guess I'm happy. I mean, it's bittersweet, right? So, I felt like I probably shouldn't have been that slow to begin with. 
but because I was that slow, the fact that I finished second makes me happy. So, it's up and down. How are you feeling with the result of that night? How I'm feeling about the result of that night, man, I'm ecstatic about it. Um, been with these guys since the start of season one. I wanted this championship really bad. It meant a whole lot to me. I feel like it would have meant more to me than it would to most other people, you know. So obviously I was thrilled about the result and how we were able to pull it off and that I was just thankful for the opportunity to do it, honestly. It was so much fun racing Mark for the win there, having Ollie finish behind me after he, you know, finished right there with me, right behind me, after he'd helped me so much earlier in the week practicing and everything like that. It was really awesome, just a truly incredible moment. So I'm really happy with the result of not only the race, but the championship, of course. As for what I can take from this season, <clears throat> this was a season where I joined a league based on the drama from the last race. Got put into a team with Cedric, Kali, and Norris. A team I never thought I would be on. Probably one of the weirdest teams I could ever think of to make. And I had a blast. I had a lot of fun. Gained a new friend. Norris, I had never met him before. I'm really glad he was on our team. Cedric's pretty fun to be with. Uh, he's funny, and Kali, he's a joy. He's a joy to be around. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty fun season. Learned a lot, was competitive, and Felt heartbreak, uh, felt excitement, and even got a win. So probably would have should have won two other races, especially Indianapolis. Now that I'm watching back at it, because if Cedric didn't cause the caution, if he spun out and didn't cause the caution, that probably would have been us. But you know, that's just looking back. But yeah, I had a lot of fun this season. Biggest takeaway for me would be it pays to practice definitely you know i mentioned it before in one of the previous episodes that i'd gotten out of the habit of practicing quite a bit a lot between texas and road america there was a good five or six week stretch where i didn't practice at all for these races i you know just wasn't really feeling it i guess and it showed in my performance um her numbers hurt quite a bit but then road america is where we finally started to turn things around some and we were able to get back to the front because I've put the time in and the effort, uh, especially at Phoenix. And it really showed that after I was able to get to clean air at Phoenix, we could pull out and we could, we were the class of the field at Phoenix, in my opinion, because of the practice that we put in. Anyway, so that's my biggest takeaway from this season is that it pays to practice and that if you can, you should. Definitely. Uh, what can I take away from this season? I will take away, for me anyways, had his ups and downs. We walked away tied with the most wins this season, which is, you know, pretty cool. Uh, we got four, so I, unfortunately, I guess Mark did get four as well. Uh, him being the leader in wins, uh, not able to, I guess, catch up to him, like, at all. I think we're only two wins behind, like, or, uh, I guess, tied for everyone that's tied for third uh, now. So, you know, I guess that's pretty cool. We're, we're getting closer. The stuff that I also take away from the season is the trucks are absolutely horrible to drive. I am not a fan of them whatsoever. Before I ran this this league, I pretty much only raised the trucks in Red to Pro and having the open setup and kind of being able to change and, and adjust and set up the truck the way you want it to drive, I didn't realize was that much like that, that much of a big difference. There, there was a somewhere kind of in the, the end of the regular season where I just, uh, I was balancing the, the pros and cons of, you know, whether I just leave and say, you know, screw the trucks, I'm not racing these things anymore. Or if I just stay in it and, you know, I've already gone, at that point I think it was like 10 weeks in or, or something, so. Uh, we stayed in it, you know. We got second overall, so it is what it is. I think I'm starting to get slowly the hang of them. I'm, again, I'm still not a fan. I don't think I ever will be. You know, I, I enjoy the broadcast. The broadcast is obviously really good for eFast. Sam, to you as well. You, do, you, you and Zach and Robert do a great job. What was your favorite moment of the season and why? Well, my favorite moment of the season was, of course, my first ever win in league history for every single league I've raced in. I've never hit it higher than second and yeah it was a pretty great moment. I was so proud to grab my first ever win at Atlanta 
Huge help to the teammates Cedric Hanna, Nick Crawford, and Brandon Colley. We had a huge, great strategy, and it worked out quite well. Favorite moment of the season? I personally haven't had any bright spots uh, this season, but as far as the league goes, I would have to say it would have to be between Homestead, which was, I think, the second race of the season. Uh, that finish, that wild, crazy finish, I think it was Ethan Smith and my teammate Anthony Gaudio battling for the lead. And then Cedric just comes out of nowhere, passes them both in the last corner, takes the win. Uh, that was an awesome finish. And that or maybe North Wilkesboro, uh, all the, the chaos that happened there, all the, the tempers that were going, the rivalry going on there. And then um, that green white checker finish, John Forbes doing the wall ride at the end there, trying to get in into the, the final four. Uh, that was awesome too. Am I coming back for season four? Yeah, I'm coming back. Probably gonna get screwed again on the last race of the year. Not a fan of the uh, this this wonderful, wonderful, stupid <laughs> championship format that NASCAR has done and what we're copying. Gonna do whatever we can, you know, go into the, hopefully get to the championship race and hopefully if we're needing to caution somebody in 13th can wreck each somebody else and give us a chance. So that's about all I can do. Had one opportunity, I think, on one of those restarts where I could have probably moved Danny out of the way. I decided not to, wanted to, you know, just race it clean, try to pass him clean. And hindsight, I probably just should have moved his, who moved him. I mean, hard racing and all, but it's just frustrating having the best truck throughout the whole playoffs and then have shit like that happen. So not happy about it, but you know, hopefully next season we'll have better luck and people decide to hopefully uh, race within their means on the end of a championship race when it doesn't affect them when they're, uh, no, you know, we'll see. Will I come back? I don't know. It's not even because I don't like the league or anything. It's really just work schedule stuff and life stuff, you know, love spending time with my wife and this uh, race takes up a lot of time of my day off, so um, we'll see. We'll try, but uh, no promises. You know, I've, I have great teammates, and I actually enjoy racing with them. I, I don't see, even if I were to to leave, I think that uh, I just don't even know where else I would go to run. So, so to kind of answer your last question, I think I'm leaning more on the side of staying. Um, again, as much as I hate the vehicles, I, I really enjoy the broadcast. I, really enjoy the the team like my teammates and stuff like that and racing with them uh i think you know we can keep making strides and stuff obviously we had a lot of beef and stuff like that throughout the season and uh i'm sure we'll have some more even if we do come back for season four it is what it is man it's part of it people are never going to stop complaining about the fact that i had a 5k i rating at some point these things are not my strongest vehicles i mean it is what it is. Uh, you'll always have, I guess, you'll always have haters no matter what happens. If I have a bad race like I did, for example, uh, Rockingham, even though I got collected in the wreck, you're still going to have people that say, well, I'm 5K. And if I do good, then I should have never been in this league to begin with just because I'm irating. So no matter what, people are always going to hate no matter what. So uh, that's, I guess, the, also the drama aspect is that there was a lot of it. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. It makes it interesting, I guess, when you have those rivalries, for the most part, like in other leagues that I run in, my rivalry is more with my teammates than anything, where we're all battling for wins and we're always racing around each other, where it's not really rivalry, it's, it's more of like a respect rivalry, as in like, you know, we're going to race hard, but we're going to race clean, where uh, I guess with guys that you're not necessarily a big fan of, and they're not a big fan of you, it's more like rivalry, as in, I'm going to race you hard, and if I have to, I'm going to get the bumpers out and leave it all out there, and... I felt like I didn't have too much of that, like I've been pretty clean this season, but if I come back for season four, well, we'll see what the future entails. One of the reasons also why I think the season, if I do come back for season four, is I really like the schedule. I know Danny has already kind of asked me if that was something I was planning on doing, is coming back, and I told him, you know, the schedule's really good, we're going to a bunch of tracks that I think will be fun, and that, um, you know, there's no gateway or nothing like that, there's no, just none of the tracks I absolutely hate, so that that's good. The unfortunate thing is, I guess, we, we don't have that many short tracks, but we'll see. We'll see how the future plays out. Uh, if I do come back, obviously the uh, 13 pink uh, Hello Kitty for... I what I would assume would still be Snowy Desert Racing. We'll be quick, we'll be title f contenders. Hopefully we can keep adapting and, and maybe even title favorites. 
Uh, I wouldn't necessarily be surprised if you see the 13 Hello Kitty Racing Fair Championship and even be our Season 4 champion. Are you coming back for Season 4? Oh yeah, I'm coming back for Season 4. We ain't done yet, right? As LeBron James once said, not one, all right? Not two, okay? Not three, we're, we're going for every title as long as this league keeps running, right? We're gonna take this momentum that we got from this championship and we are going to build on it. We're gonna go to work from here and we're gonna try and get the team championships with Larson Line. We're gonna try and get, you know, the title locked down every chance we can. And uh, really excited about our future in this league, man. Cannot wait to see what happens. Well, now that the, uh, the rambling's done, we're done with the questions here. Let's check out the championship celebration. Love me or hate me, you watch. And that's all you could do. Season three champions, baby. Who do you think has won the championship and why? Well, let me get a drink real quick. We'll try. That's quite salty, like someone else will know. Anyway. Alright, back to it. I believe that Cedric Kano will... Oh. Forgot. And, uh, really excited to end it with a bang, hopefully. The season, not my career. I'm still going to be racing next season. Lord willing and the creek don't rise anyway. Who is going to win the team chip? I'm not saying team championship. That one doesn't matter. Who cares about that? That water doesn't taste so good. It's like sink water or something. My daily, um, I have the most amount of water I drink in my tea. Hi, Sam. Hope you're having fun editing this. I'm sure you're having a great time trying to start up drama. Anyways. I might see you in season four. We'll see. You'll just have to tune in and find out. Free fast racing as always on Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much, Robert, Zach, and Sam. And uh catch you guys later. Peace out, adios, amigos. Season 3, it was great, it was fantastic, but that of the incredible Sim Racing Championship, we've got Season 4, and guess what, it's only just a week away! Get ready, Daytona, start us something new!